Good morning. It's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about uh, 10, 20, 10, 25 on Friday morning, the 30th of September, the end of September, the end of the third quarter. Uh, I wanted to talk today a little bit about where we are with the markets, uh, but also then I wanted to focus on the relationship between silver inventories, specifically silver COMEX inventories, and silver, uh, the commercial net position on the COMEX silver futures and the relationship of those two trends and factors to the prices, because there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding, apparently, in the market about what all that is. But, you know, first, let's talk about the markets. Gold and silver prices have fallen sharply over the last several weeks. They've fallen in line with other commodities, currencies, uh, corporate bonds, and equities. It's been part of a broad financial market sell-off. Uh, it's not been particularly specific to anything happening in the gold or silver markets. You have seen some investors pull back and wait to see how low prices go. In the last two or three days, we've seen an uh, uptick, a rebound of, of modest proportions in gold and silver. Gold's trading about 1675, uh, I think, as I speak, and silver is around 1980. Uh, think, no, 1880, I guess, um, as we speak. Our view at CPM Group is that this is something of a short live rebound uh, from a very oversold positions. Prices could rise a little bit more over the next week or so, but we do think that the stronger economic conditions, it's kind of weird to say that, stronger than they have been in the first uh, three quarters of the year, Still some good strength, uh, employment figures and other economic factors showing some strength and higher interest rates and the prospect of higher than had been expected interest rates over the next three to four months um, all suggests that the weakness in gold and silver prices and the weakness in the broader financial markets probably may not be behind the market. So we could see gold and silver prices recover a little bit for the next week or so, but then come back off. We do think that, you know, at some point, maybe later in October, maybe into November or December, we will see a, a firmer base in gold and silver prices and the beginning of a recovery. Uh, the other side of the market is that there are a lot of scary things out there that could cause investors to buy gold and silver. They haven't yet, uh, or recently. Uh, we're particularly worried about Vladimir Putin's increasingly desperate position, apparently within the Russian uh, government and Russian nation, as well as vis-a-vis -vis his invasion of the Ukraine. Um, he clearly continues to try to suck uh, NATO and the United States into a bigger battle. Um, and he has been threatening using tactical nuclear weapons. Um, that poses risks for him, but it poses risks for people living in the Ukraine and people around the world. We're probably closer to nuclear weapons being used uh, on civilian populations for the first time since Hiroshima and Nagasaki in, in 1945 than we have been since 1945. Uh, so it's a little bit of a disconcerting time and uh, whether or not that gets reflected in investors buying gold and silver remains to be seen. There are big, five big political uncertainties that some of which probably will be resolved in the next two, three months, some of which will clearly spill into 2023 and beyond. Uh, the big one, obviously, is what will happen in Russia uh, related to its invasion of the Ukraine. And, and how that's going to, to all shake out. Um, a resolution might come sooner than we had been thinking six months ago, um, given the strength of the Ukrainian counterattack and the increasing dissolution of consensus within the Russian government. Chinese Communist Party is having its Congress in the middle of October, and that's going to be very important. And what happens in Ukraine and in Russia over the next two weeks is also going to be very important. And you can see that the United States and some of its allies have been pushing the Chinese to see uh, the need for a more cooperative stance on a global basis. 
than has been the case for the last four years. We'll see how all that shakes out. Then in early November, you have the U.S. by-elections, which will be very critical and probably very uh, nasty. Um, you have the U.K. government imploding in record time, a uh, really false uh, step uh, on its tax policies and, and fiscal budget. And then you have the ongoing European Union uh, issues that were, were going on. Uh, most prominently displayed or most recently displayed with the Italian election last Sunday. So those factors could cut either way. Uh, they could be negative for gold and silver because they could develop in a way that reduces international and domestic uh, tensions and pressures and concerns, or they could be more positive if uh, they go a way that, that generates more concerns about it. Now, I wanted to talk about, as I said, silver inventories, commercial COMEX positions, and prices. You know, the real importance of the net commercial position to prices. The relationship between changes in COMEX inventories and prices, I'll show you some charts in a second. The fact is that the biggest decline in COMEX inventories, both in terms of ounces and in percentage of COMEX inventories, occurred in the 1990s at a very bearish time it actually reflected investor selling of silver and it coincided with flat to lower prices. And the biggest increase in COMEX inventories occurred in the audies and the teens of uh, the, the last 20 years and has coincided with rising silver prices. So people who tell you that falling COMEX inventories will inevitably lead to higher silver prices are speaking contrary to the historical precedents that we've seen. COMEX inventory declines have not led to higher prices. In fact, they've coincided with lower prices. And, and COMEX rising inventories have coincided with rising prices. I also want to talk about the real relationship between the shift in commercials to a net long position in prices. Basically, the shift reflects non-commercials uh, going long, not for any willful, I have a typo in my text here. It reflects non-commercials, non non I'm sorry, no, I don't have it. It reflects non-commercials going short. Investors have been selling silver futures and going short silver futures. And the commercials who supply the other side of those transactions by definition and by virtue of the fact that they're market makers go long. It doesn't reflect any willful move on the part of the commercials to be long because they think silver prices are going to rise. Let's go through some of the charts. Comics inventories. Yes, they have fallen. Yes, they've fallen on both a registered level and an eligible level. And you can see that the eligible levels, even though they've declined, um, are at record levels, higher than they've ever been before since at least 1988. And you can see that the registered stocks have fallen even more, uh, and they are still pretty much higher than they have been in much of the period of the time from, say, 2000, 1999 into about 2018, 2019. So plenty of metal around. But let's look at the relationship between those, those inventories and prices. And here, just to see you another, show you another perspective, here's the decline in inventories back in the period 1993 to 1999, which was a period that saw silver prices trading between three and a half and five and a half dollars for about 15 years. So you saw from 350 to 100 million ounces, that's like you know, five sevenths. Five sevenths, uh, do the math, comes out to be the vast majority of COMEX inventories fell, disappeared, went away from the market, and the price didn't rise. Compare that to the less than 100 million ounce decline that we've seen, rather, well, this goes through the first quarter, it's now more than 100 million ounces, but you know, you're far away from it. And oh, the silver price has declined during that period of of declining inventories since uh, 2020. 
just another way of looking at it. You can see that big decline in the orange line, that's month-end inventories in the period 1993 through 1999, and the price was flatlined. You can see the inventories started to rise after 1999 slowly, and the price was flatlining until about 2004, 2005. Then you can see that period from 2016 onward when inventories rose sharply and the price of silver went from you know, $10, $12 to $30 in the event of rising inventories. And as inventories have fallen, so too have the prices of silver. So a logical person would look at all this data and say, ah, Falling inventories on the COMEX do not necessarily presage higher prices. That's what a rational person would say. Now let's look at not the commercial net positions uh, on the COMEX. They respond to and mirror investor positions. You may see a striking uh, contrast here. They move point for point. That's because when non-commercials, i.e. investors, want to go long silver, they have to find someone who will go short. Most people don't like going short assets of any sort. So a market maker will go short. An investor says, I want to buy a futures contract. The commercial says, okay, here, I will go short and I will sell that to you. Now, a couple times you've seen where the non-commercials, the investors, want to be net short. Happened around 1996, 1997, happened around 2000, 2001, happened very briefly in around 14, got pretty big in that period, 2018, 2019. And you will see that commercials started to go long because they're responding to the investor's desire to be short. And you can see all the way over on the right that we now have a situation where investors are net short silver futures, i.e. they're bearish on the price on a short-term basis. And lo and behold, uh, the commercials are net long. It has nothing to do with a willful decision to be net long on the part of those commercials banks and brokerage houses and trading companies. It has everything to do with the fact that they're market makers and when investors want to be short silver, they go long because they're supplying the long offset to those short positions. Another chart, that this looks at the net commercial positions versus prices. And again, you can see that when Net, when the commercials go net long, it tends to correspond with falling silver prices. It's not that the commercials will say, gee, I think that the price of silver is going to rise, so I want to be net long. It's that investors say, I think the price of silver is going to fall, so I want to reduce my long position or actually go short silver. And the commercials take the offsetting position because that's their job. That's why we call them commercials. Now, you've heard people talk about, oh no, they're going long because they see the writing on the wall and they know the price of silver is going to, to, to skyrocket any moment. And this is not true. Anyone who tells you that the commercials are going long willfully because they expect the price to rise, don't know this history, right? Anyone who tells you that he's never seen commercials being net short, I guess they weren't in the market in 2016 and 2019, or maybe they just weren't paying attention, or maybe they just weren't trying desperately to sell investors silver for a bunch of bad reasons. Now, some probably don't know that because yeah, they weren't in the market in 2019, but some do. I know of at least one who does because we, he came to us and asked us to talk to him about all of this, and we explained it to him years ago. He didn't like what he heard, so he didn't, uh, he ignored it 
and he's going off and said, oh no, you know, the commercials are going long because they understand that the price is going to skyrocket. Yeah, don't listen to him. Rational investors understand the markets that they invest in and they say, okay, this is what's going on. You can read more about the markets uh, at our website. There's a bunch of free reads. We're adding to them uh, and we'll continue to add to them. And you can buy some of our research to help you understand this stuff better. We'll be back next week, next Tuesday. Uh, until then, have a good weekend. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you and take care of the world because it desperately needs your attention at this